uh, and this specialist input needs to be available on the same site for a number of reasons, uh, partly to avoid travel of the uh, patient uh, or the specialist, also to have the speed of availability of expert opinion uh, in the situation of an emergency, uh, but also importantly and sometimes overlooked, <clears throat> the ease of interaction between um, congenital cardiac surgical teams and other specialist uh, teams in the decision making and the planning of care for, for patients. And care, care for children needs to be in a child appropriate setting. Uh, the clinical panel uh, felt that this was an extremely important uh, standard to be achieved and the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health uh, support this uh, with a quote that is uh, as follows, isolated children's services are unacceptable. <clears throat> Specialist children's cardiac services must be delivered within a hospital providing a broad range of other specialist children's services. So again, this uh, standard has been derived uh, with a lot of professional input. Thank you. So having access, uh, assessed all existing level providers against the standards, four trusts were identified as being unlikely to meet the standards in the required time frames and were therefore the focus of our proposals for change and our formal consultation. Uh, these trusts were Central Manchester NHS Foundation Trust, uh, now known as Manchester University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust, University Hospitals of Leicester NHS Trust, uh, the Royal Brompton and Harefield NHS Foundation Trust and Newcastle upon Tyne Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. We received uh, 7,673 online consultation responses and a further 78 other written responses, which I think demonstrates the strength of feeling around these services. A detailed independent analysis of these responses is included in Annex A and has informed the recommendations being presented to the board today, which I will now take in turn. So starting with the North West, in the North West, level one specialist inpatient services for people with CHD have to date been divided between two cities, Liverpool, <coughs> where children received their care at Alder Hay Children's Hospital, and Manchester, where adults received their care at Manchester Royal Infirmary. Running the service in this way, though, inevitably meant compromise, because it meant the adult service depending on a single surgeon. He could not be there all the time, and the distance between the cities was such that cover could not be provided from Liverpool. There also wasn't enough surgical work to allow him to meet minimum volume expectations, just 92 operations in 2016-17. As such, NHS England's proposal was to bring Level 1 services for adults and children together in Liverpool, with Alder Hay continuing to provide the children's service, who were already providing 415 procedures in 2015-16, and Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital being commissioned to provide the adult service as part of a single surgical team working with Alder Hay. As a consequence, the Level 1 adult service would be decommissioned at Manchester, but it was envisaged that they would continue to provide the full range of Level 2 services as part of a North West CHD network. The recommendation before the board and set out at the end of paragraph 28 is that the original proposal on which we consulted should be taken forward. However, this should be conditional on the Liverpool Trust providing robust and adequate support for the full range of level two services in Manchester as part of the Northwest CHD network. Under these network arrangements, we would expect Manchester University Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust to continue to play a leading role in providing maternity care for women with CHD, including the development of care pathways and the coordination of multidisciplinary discussions of maternity care. We would expect that care for women with such complex needs would be discussed at the Northwest CHD Network multidisciplinary team meeting to determine the best place for delivery. A more detailed implementation schedule is set out in Appendix 1 to the paper. Moving on now to University of Hos Hospitals of Leicester NHS Foundation Trust. The original consultation proposal here was to decommission Leicester as a Level 1 centre. This was principally based on the assessment that they did not at that time have a credible plan to either meet the paediatric co-location standards or the surgical activity standards. However, since then, the Trust has come back with a convincing plan for achieving the co-location standards. 
Furthermore, they have submitted a detailed growth plan included at Annex E in your bundle of papers, uh, setting out how they will meet the surgical activity standards in full. To underpin this plan, the Trust has been working hard to build relationships and establish networks with referring hospitals across the East Midlands region. And at Annex D, there is evidence of this in the form of letters from hospitals across the patch indicating the likely referral numbers into Leicester if they were to continue to be commissioned as a Level 1 centre. In light of this, the recommendation before the board and set out at the end of paragraph 33 of the paper is that we should continue to commission Level 1 services from Leicester, but that this should be conditional on the Trust achieving full compliance with the standards within the required timeframes as described in its own plan to do so. Again, a more detailed implementation schedule with key performance indicators on progress is set out at Appendix 1. In terms of the Royal Brompton and Harefield NHS Foundation Trust, the original consultation proposal was to decommission the Royal Brompton as a Level 1 centre. The principal reason for this was that there was no plan for achieving the paediatric co-location standard. However, since then, and in response to this prompt, as part of their response to the consultation, the Trust has presented a joint proposal to collaborate with another of the hospitals in London, Guy's and St Thomas's, part of the King's Health Partnership. This proposal, which is set out in more detail at Annex G of your papers, would see the CHD services offered by the two hospitals brought together. Cardiac services for children would be provided from the new buildings to be developed as part of the Evelina Children's Hospital, with the adult service provided from a newly created heart and lung centre, with both developments forming part of the St Thomas's Westminster Bridge campus. This is undoubtedly an ambitious proposal which would not only achieve full compliance with the CHD standards but would also have the benefit of keeping other key services including paediatric respiratory services as well as research teams together. As such, the recommendation before the board and set out at the end of paragraph 38 is that the board should support the further development of this plan, which could include other potential partners and continue to commission level one services from the Brompton in the meantime. The continued commissioning would be conditional on firm progress being made in developing the new proposal and taking it through the usual business case approvals process. Again, a more detailed implementation schedule is set out uh, at Appendix 1. Moving finally on to Newcastle-upon-Tyne NHS Foundation Trust. So in terms of the original assessment against the standards, Newcastle was assessed as not meeting the co-location standard, nor likely to meet the surgical activity standards and the timescales required. However, it was recognised that decommissioning the CHD service would make the intertwined advanced heart failure and heart transplant service for children and adults with CHD immediately unviable. This is one of only two centres in the country providing this service. Therefore, the board agreed that its consultation proposal should be to continue to commission Level 1 CHD services from Newcastle and allow the Trust more time to meet the standards. The recommendation before the board and set out at the end of paragraph 43 remains consistent with this original proposal. It is recommended that the commissioning of Level 1 services should continue until at least March 2021. However, recognising the importance of the quality and sustainability of both the CHD service and the interdependent advanced heart failure and transplant service, the board is invited to agree that further consideration should be given to the future commissioning of both. This would then inform our commissioning approach from 2020-21 onwards, but until the outcome of that work is known, a derogation against the 2019 co-location standard should be applied. Again, Appendix 1 sets out a more detailed implementation schedule. Finally, the Board is asked to confirm the commissioning arrangements for Level 2 services going forward, as set out in paragraphs 45 to 47 of the paper, and to note the further action set out in paragraphs 49 to 52 to support full implementation of the standards, including better information, <coughs> establishing and funding formal CHD networks, and putting in place a rolling peer review programme. So in conclusion, the recommendations presented to the board today modify NHS England's original consultation proposals. This is because we've listened to the views expressed during consultation and have considered new proposals and information that have emerged along the way. 
If accepted by the board, their implementation will further support us in moving towards full <coughs> national compliance with the standards, meaning that every operation or cardiology intervention for CHD patients will be carried out by specialist doctors with a volume of practice sufficient to develop and maintain their skills. All children with heart disease will receive their inpatient care in a holistic, child-friendly environment. Daily interaction between clinical teams will be facilitated. Resilience between will be enhanced through larger level one centres with bigger teams. Care will be delivered as close to home as possible through network specialist level two centres, level three centres and outreach clinics, all coordinated by the network team. And finally, occasional and isolated practice will no longer be permitted. So low volume surgery or interventional cardiology in institutions without sufficient specialist CHD expertise will cease. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. That's a very good <coughs> and succinct summary of what has been an enormous amount of work. So um, I think that the framework through which the board would wish to look at this is, first of all, how far the proposals that we endorsed uh, at, the, at the last meeting in relation to this have been taken through the process and the extent to which they've changed still represents the consistency that we wish to see in application. Uh, I think secondly, uh, the extent to which particularly in relation to Leicester and the Royal Brompton and perhaps also to Newcastle, there is sufficient assurance uh, to the board that the continuing commissioning of these services will continue to uh, nonetheless ensure that those very standards of quality that you and Sir Bruce have referred to will be continue to be maintained. Uh, I think this, this, this is of critical importance to the board. Uh, and then finally, I will then invite the board to consider uh, whether